Hi, I'm Tim McKercher, and we're here to show you a comparison between the popular Yamaha 192 and the new kid on the block, the Scarab 195. We're going to show you how the relaunch of the Scarab brand is going to set new standards in the sport boat segment in the marine industry. The jet boat segment is the fastest growing segment in the marine industry, and we're going to show you why Scarab has done their homework to take that segment to entirely new heights. So now we're going to go over some of the features and the differences between the Scarab 195 and the Yamaha 192. So we're going to start at the transom and work our way to the bow on both units. We're going to start with the Yamaha 192. One thing that's different right away is the reverse system. The way the reverse system works on a Yamaha is the reverse gate is attached to the nozzle. It's very, very small and honestly this is one of the weakest points of a, of a Yamaha boat is the low speed maneuverability and the reverse. It just simply doesn't have the a capability at low speeds to have maximum control compared to the Rotax powered jet boat. Now you'll see the Scarab reverse system is a little bit different than the Yamaha. The reverse system is very large cast aluminum piece, it's very very strong and it's attached to the jet pump itself. So it gives you much more control, it's very very simple, especially for a new boater. You simply turn the wheel whatever direction that you want to rotate the boat, whether you're forward, neutral or reverse. Whatever way you turn the wheel is what way the boat's going to rotate. In your first time buyers, it's going to be very very simple for them to get a hang of that. And the low speed maneuverability of the Rotax powered Scarab is far superior to the Yamaha. Now the first thing that you'll see on the Yamaha boat is the strap. Uh, it's an adequate strap, so we're going to pull our way up here, but it's not quite the same as the Scarab handle. Now we're going to pull out the ladder on the Scarab and climb up and you'll see a very uh, strong, secure, flush mounted grab handle to get into the boat. You have a nice padded area on the swim platform with the embossed logo into the padded deck. Now, once you get to the rear of the Scarab, this is where you have a little bit more functionality over the Yamaha. So one of the areas that can be improved, and the Scarab did improve, is the way to get in and out of the boat from the dock from the transom area. The transom of the Yamaha wraps around that you'll see down at the lower corner, so it hinders being able to get in and get out without uh, tripping. Again, the Yamaha was a good design in its day, but we can make it better. So some of the elements are the step-in. So the side step, you'll see it's flush with the platform. So when you're stepping on the dock or off the dock, very easy to get into and you don't have to worry about tripping. So this is Yamaha's transom lounge. It was very innovative when they launched it, but it does have some downfalls. Uh, one of the downfalls is it uses a lot of transom area, which is great in a showroom. But on the water, the reality is it steals some of the cockpit space. So you really have to ask your customer where they're spending more time. Are they spending more time in the boat or are they spending more time out of the boat? So again, the transom area was an innovative feature, but how do we make that better? Let's utilize this space. Rather than stealing cockpit space, we can have both. We can have a great transom lounge and we can have a, a larger storage area or larger cockpit area on the Scarab unit. Let's show how that works. Now this is where the Scarab really gets innovative. Uh, there are some, some cool features uh, integrated into the unit. We have two cup holders on the rear and we also have a stereo remote on the transom. So now if you're at the sandbar, you're in an inner tube, you don't have to climb back in the boat to actually change your music selection. Now moving forward, this is where the Scarab really maximizes the space that's allotted on a 195 compared to the Yamaha. We have a hinge convertible seating arrangement. So the three seats here all lean forward into the cockpit. And we're not giving up any space in the cockpit or the transom. We're just utilizing the space more efficiently. So what you see when you step into the Yamaha 192 is a snap-in carpet, pretty standard gray carpet, but it's not exactly the same effect as when you step in the Scarab 195. Now the first thing that you'll see that you step into the Scarab is the carpet. It's not traditional carpet, it's a dry carpet uh, where the water just goes through, but it's got the Scarab logo embossed into the carpet. It gives it that little touch that really separates the Scarab from any other jet boat on the market. So we've got a traditional U-shaped uh, cockpit area here on the Yamaha 192. So when you sit down 
uh, you'll see you could sit four people uh, in this area but the problem is you can sit four bottoms but not necessarily uh, four sets of legs where the Scarab design team did something a little bit unique to help fit four people's worth of legs in that cockpit area. All right, you just saw how the U-shaped seating in a Yamaha is basically traditional. Uh, this is where the Scarab really stands apart. Again, we've got some innovative design that really sets the Scarab apart in that 19-foot range. We already talked about the convertible seating. We're gonna push these seats back, and now we really get into the quality uh, aspect of the Scarab product. What you'll see is some of these cutouts in this U-shaped seating in the back. Now what that's for is basically for the people on the side to put their leg in. So now you don't have all four passengers, all their legs fighting for the same space. So you can put your leg back here, everybody's comfortable, they have the space that they need and that they want. Now here's one of the design elements that just kind of makes you shake your head. Uh, basically what Yamaha did was remove their passenger seat and just put a bench seat here. But they didn't do anything else to, to really make it comfortable. So when a passenger is sitting here, yeah they have a handle, but let's just say they want to observe a, a wakeboard. I mean they, they put a tower on this boat so obviously they're, they're planning on towing somebody. But you sit backwards and what happens is you hit your head on the windshield. Another element customers are gonna see right away is just simply the quality. The quality of the upholstery is superior to any Yamaha boat. And that goes all the way up to the driver and the passenger seats. We've got the logo embossed right on the seat, both the driver and the passenger. And they are bucket seats, so they're gonna hold you in because the Scarab boat is all about performance and it's really gonna turn tight and have a lot of fun when it's on the water. So it's gonna hold you in place with the, the side pieces coming out. But what you'll see compared to the Yamaha is there's a cutout here. So somebody did wanna turn sideways without turning the whole seat, but you can turn the whole seat if you would like. Uh, you can do that with ease. All right, so now we're gonna move over into the captain's area where you'll see it's a pretty basic uh, wraparound style seat, uh, but it's a little bit cumbersome to get into just the way that it's cut. I mean, yeah, it holds you in place, but it doesn't give you a lot of um, maneuverability just the way it's designed to kind of hold your, your legs in place. Now, talking about ergonomics and visibility of the way that the cockpit's designed, my eyes are directly in line with this framework. I guess I could duck down a little bit to see through uh, the windshield. Uh, and then when I look to the right, what do I see? I see a wakeboard tower. So the visibility is not necessarily the greatest on the Yamaha 192. Another element that Scarab really has a, uh, an advantage over the Yamaha in is ergonomics or visibility. Where the Scarab, when you're in the seated position, your eyes are going right through the windshield rather than looking at the framework. And then if you put the bolster up, then obviously you're seeing over the windshield. Now also, you'll notice with the seating arrangement of the Scarab boat, you're not staring at the tower. So let's talk a little bit about the wake tower. Uh, the tower of the Yamaha, it's, it's a more traditional tower. It is collapsible. The Yamaha system, it lowers to the back. So your passengers basically, they have to move. They have to get out of the way to have the tower lowered. So that's not necessarily uh, as good a design as the Scarab 195 tower. Also, the tow point is pretty far back on the 192 from Yamaha. And what that does, uh, specifically, more so with a jet boat than any other boat, is it puts that tow point further back. So if you do have somebody that's cutting really hard, you could get a little transom pull out. Compared to the Scarab 195, let's take a look at that tower. So one of the unique design features of the Scarab is the forward swept tower. There's a lot of advantages to the forward swept tower uh, over the traditional tower of the Yamaha 190. Now the visibility of a forward swept tower means there is no hindrances in visibility compared to the Yamaha. The Yamaha 192 has some railing going right above the windshield that hinders your side view. Now the forward swept tower also has some, some physics benefits. What it does is move the tow point more towards the dead center of the boat, which avoids any transom pullout for somebody that's cutting really hard on a wakeboard or a water ski. 
So that's a big advantage. And then also if you're in an area that might have some low-lying bridges where you need to lower the tower, it lowers forward and it just drops down right over the top of the windshield. So it makes it very, very simple. Nobody really has to move in their seated position to lower the tower. Then it's the tower itself. It's just a high quality matte finish, two screws and it's down uh, system with the kicker speakers mounted to it so it's completely integrated. And then the bimini top. The bimini top is clearly integrated with the tower design so it acts as one with the tower. The fit and finish is very tight. It provides adequate sun protection from the driver and the observer and some of the passengers. So you just saw the Scarab 195 tower in a bimini system. You know, when we put this bimini tower up on this boat, we were looking for adjustment points. You know, maybe we thought we might be missing a, a strap to tighten this up, but this is, it's all hard connection points. Uh, not the sexiest thing ever, but it's a little limp and we don't know really how to tighten this up and it hasn't even been in the sun yet. But well, you can see the obvious difference between the Scarab Bimini top and the Yamaha 192. Okay, in addition to the, the premium line of sight with the Scarab windshield is the windshield itself, the material. It's an automotive style windshield, so it's almost seamless. The framework is very, very thin. The glass fits flush with the framework to give it that premium look, that premium finish, and it's very, very strong. And then talking about the visibility of the windshield, I mean, it's a basic windshield. It does its job, uh, but it has the old style railing and it's, it's not really the strongest. So if somebody was really uh, trying to hold on to this or it bumped into something, I'd be kind of concerned that it could break. It simply doesn't look like that great a quality. And now we go to the helm of the Scarab 195. You're gonna see an immediate difference in quality and just fit and finish and just cool factor with the Scarab 195. All of the buttons, all of the switches are billet aluminum, high quality, very precise, no play in any of the functions. And then you have your info center. Your info center has a wealth of information. So you've got an analog tachometer, you've got an analog speedometer, then you've got all your warning functions, and then also you have your digital displays that can tell you your fuel level, your hours, your speed, your RPM. It'll also tell you your depth. It'll welcome you once you're on your vessel. And it'll also talk about your fuel consumption, your engine temperature, and basically all your operating systems to make sure you're operating at the optimal situation. Now what you'll also see is you've got a stereo remote on the helm area. So now you don't have to ask your passenger to change the channel or turn the volume down or turn it up. You can do it yourself while you're driving. And then we also have a cubby over here where you can put your cell phone. So now if you're using your cell phone for navigation, for GPS, you can simply place it right here and it makes it very easy uh, to use your, your mobile device. And then of course we have a cup holder and then we get to uh, the fun lever. This is the throttle lever of the Rotax Fortech engine. And now we're gonna talk about some of the unique features of that Fortech engine. I'm Mike Carter, Business Development Director from BRP. I'm going to explain to you the three power levels that we offer in our Rotax Fortech jet propulsion system. What we see here is our 250 horsepower version. And what makes it a 250 horsepower engine versus the other two executions are first the supercharger here. So this compresses the charge and lets us get more fuel and air into the engine. The second of all, an external intercooler here that cools the charge back down to let us get even more fuel loaded into the charge before it goes into the combustion chamber. In our 200 horsepower version, we'd still have the supercharger here, but the external intercooler is removed. So it's still supercharged, same RPM, 8100 RPM roughly, uh, but making 200 horsepower without this external intercooler, 250 horsepower with this external intercooler. And our 150 horsepower version, the supercharger comes off, the intercooler of course is off, and it's a naturally aspirated 150 horsepower version uh, with a max RPM of 7400. So the way the Rotax Fortec engine breathes, it starts here with this air filter, travels down here into the supercharger. Here the charge is, is compressed, 
it leaves here in the 250 horsepower version and travels through these tubes up here to the intercooler where the charge is cooled down so it can accept more fuel when it gets to the uh, combustion chamber. It leaves here cooler, now ready for more charge, down the back side of the engine and into the air intake. Of course, then the fuel is injected and the combustion happens. Okay, let's talk for a minute about how the jet pump works. What we see here is a, a cutaway hull. This is the water intake. This is the hole in the bottom of the boat where the water enters. So it's covered with this intake grate to keep debris from going into the, uh, into the pump system. And a very important feature that BRP uh, jet propulsion systems have that no one else has is this drive shaft protector. It's hard to see because this is cut away, but this sleeve completely covers the rotating drive shaft. So nothing can be wound up around the drive shaft like other jet boat manufacturers can. It's a very important feature and it, again only available with the Rotax system. So the water comes up here around the shaft. This is the impeller that's drawing the water in. It draws it in, the water gets squeezed down to here, so it has to accelerate a great deal to get into this, this cross section. And it comes out at a high velocity. That velocity with this steering nozzle gives you your, gives you your thrust forward and your steering. So this is hooked to the steering wheel, lets you steer the boat left and right. This is the reverse gate. So when this is up, the, the water is coming straight out the back, propelling the vehicle forward. When you shift into reverse, that water is diverted sideways and forward to make the, the boat go backwards. This large reverse gate with its deflecting shape on the inside gives you great control when you're driving around the dock. You can modulate both the reverse gate and the steering nozzle for pinpoint precision on your vehicle control. If you do choose to get the eye control option on this, you're going to have some different modes. You're going to have eco mode, you're going to have ski mode, and you're going to have cruise control. Now eco mode is a very simple feature, uh, but it's taken a lot of innovation to develop this to a, a functional format. Basically you're going on a long ride, you don't know what your optimal fuel position or throttle position is. With eco mode, you simply activate eco mode, you put the throttle lever all the way down, and now the ignition system is going to take the engine to the perfect RPM range to guarantee you the greatest fuel economy on the fuel that you have. So now there's no guesswork. You're going to be guaranteed to get the best fuel economy that you possibly can. Now the next mode I mentioned was ski mode. And this could be called the anti-argument device. This is something that Yamaha doesn't offer, uh, but let's just build that scenario. It's a husband, wife, a girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, brother, brother, sister, sister, whatever it might be. That means one person is driving the boat, the other person is on the other end of the rope. The person at the, on the other end of the rope wants to make sure the driver provides a very steady, uh, very consistent pull. Now what ski mode does is it basically allows you to program how the power is delivered. That's part of the intelligent throttle control system. So the first thing that it's going to ask is the ramp up mode. And the ramp up is the acceleration curve. So it's going to help you determine the acceleration curve between one being the most mellow, five being the strongest. So let's say we're going to go wake skating or wakeboarding, we're going to put it at ramp two. Pretty mellow curve. Now the next thing it'll ask is the target speed. Target speed is basically holding a speed consistent no matter what the skier is going to do or the driver is going to do. So once ski mode is activated, uh, it has a little ski mode symbol on the gauge It's going to flash. All the driver has to do after the skier says go is put the throttle all the way down. And the ignition system is going to deliver the power exactly how it's programmed, very smooth, very linear, and then take it to the speed that was designated uh, with the speed control system. That can also be adjusted by one mile an hour increments on the fly. So ski mode basically makes every driver an expert driver and that's only available on Scarab boats. Well now that we've figured out our visibility is not the greatest on the Omaha, let's look at some of the gauge features. Uh, it's pretty traditional. Uh, you've got a standard analog speedometer, you've got a standard analog tachometer. Uh, that's about it as far as gauges go. Then you've got some of your switches, they're, they're plastic. Uh, normal, you know, low, low price switch, all the basic, very basic. They do have a cruise assist feature, 
uh, which the Scarab also has. But really, it's, uh, it's kind of bare bones. So now we're going to talk about the power plant. The Rotax 4Tech engine has some very unique benefits that you can't find on any other jet boat. So let's take a look at that. As we make our way back, you're going to see the engine compartment opens up to give you a lot of access to all the important features. So here's the Rotax power plant. You've got easy access to your battery. Then you also have some other storage over on the starboard side. Now the Rotax power plant, all of them have a catalytic converter and they're also closed loop cooled, which means there's no external water, no debris, no salt water, no soot that's going into this engine to cool it. And the Rotax 4Tech engine gives consumers extreme reliability and ultimate performance in a jet power pack that is really compact, easy to work on, and also very, very quiet because it's also equipped with decibel sound reduction system. So that's one element where the Scarab is really going to shine over the Yamaha. The Yamaha, honestly, is a very, very loud jet boat when you're on the water. So the Yamaha boat, it's powered by a 1.8 liter Yamaha engine. A little bit noisy though, so we're going to take a look at it. Some of the power functions, you do have a cruise assist, but that's basically it as far as special controls or special technologies on the Yamaha engine. Now you access your, the engine compartment by lifting this hatch up, but you don't have a lot of room to work on. And you also see there's not a lot of acoustics. There's not a lot of sound deadening material in the engine compartment. And that really what leads to the Yamaha being such a, a loud, noisy boat when it's under operation. The, the Scare really utilizes the space on a 19 foot boat more efficiently than arguably any other boat in the industry. Uh, where we're utilizing the storage not just underneath these seats but also in the cockpit, the helm area, and the driver's side. So the back rest pops up on the helm side and we've got our filler cushions if you really want to make the scarab into a playpen in the bow. And then we also have our uh, block off shield that we can just simply slide into place. We can shut the windshield and then now you have some protection over the uh, wind and environment where you can't necessarily do that with Yamaha's 192. So some of the exterior design elements is the cleat itself. Yeah, they have some pop-up cleats, but they're four inch cleats, not necessarily something you want to secure a 19 foot boat with. So the Scarab 195, obviously it's designed to stand out on the water. You've got three different color options. We've got six inch cleats, which are completely adequate to hold a 19 foot boat in most water conditions. You've got raised lettering for the logo on the side, and then you've got a premium trailer. Just a lot of elements that set the Scarab 195 apart from any other jet boat on the market. And that's a high level overview of the differences between Yamaha's 192 and Scarab's new 195. Scarab has clearly done their homework and is ready to take the jet boat segment to entirely new heights with quality, fit and finish, and overall performance that only a Scarab brand can deliver on. So if you want to take your boat sales in the recreational sport boat segment to new heights, you're going to want to partner with the Scarab boat brand.